All right, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to teach how to draw Lewis dot structures because they're really hard to do. Uh, but I'm gonna do them in the context of this MCAT question. And it says, which of the following answer choices list the following molecules in the order of decreasing bond angles? And the molecules are carbonate, carbon dioxide, methane, and water. And then basically you have permutations in four answer choices or none of the above. Um, this question is Hallmark, Hallmark MCAT, and the reason is they it requires you to do three main things. Okay, first of all, you need to go from the name that I'm giving you, like carbonate, to the molecule. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when I tell you carbonate, you need to be able to tell me carbonate refers to CO32 minus. When I tell you carbon dioxide, you need to know that that's referring to CO2. When I tell you methane, that's referring to CH4. And when I tell you water, you need to know that that's referring to H2O. So to go from name to molecule is something that most students, especially if you've never been exposed to these molecules, don't always know. But by the time you get to the MCAT, there will be some molecules you're expected to know, uh, both the molecule and the overall like structure. And these are definitely some of them. So memorize these and know that when they when you see their name, you should be able to make the connection between the name and the molecule. The second thing you have to do is you have to go from the molecule to the structure. And when I ask about the structure, I'm asking, what is the structure of this molecule, right? Some of you know the structure of water. You know what water looks like but other people don't. And when you draw the structure, you need to be able to draw it in Lewis dot form. And after you draw the structure, the last thing this question is requiring us to do is analyze the bond angles, right? Because remember, this question is asking about the, the, the bond angles and which one has the highest bond angles. So those are the three things we need to do in this question. And they're really hard, but you know, we're gonna make it easier. So I'm gonna show you how to get from one to three. I'm also gonna show you how to draw Lewis dot structures really easily because it's really easy to do. And after we do all that, we're going to solve this problem. So let's move on to how to draw Lewis dot structures. So there are two steps to how to draw Lewis dot structures. This is the first step. This is the second step. So I'm going to start with the example of methane. If you see methane here, right, I'm going to make sure we understand. So the first step is determine the number of valence electrons for each atom. Determine the number of valence electrons for each atom. So how much, how many valence electrons in this case, look at this arrow, that's point of carbon. It's saying how many valence electrons does carbon have? Carbon has four valence electrons, right? So you write four there. Now I'm going to ask you, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? Hydrogen has one, right? But how many hydrogens do we have in methane? We have four. So the total valence electrons for hydrogen is four because there are four valence electrons um, total. So now when we add these up, there's a total of eight valence electrons, right? Great. That's great. Now, the second thing you want to do is determine how many electrons each atom wants to have. Wants to have. So this is like ideal. If you could have as many electrons as possible, how many electrons would carbon want to have? And this might sound kind of odd, but it's going to make much more sense when I tell you. Carbon wants to have eight electrons, right? Remember the octet rule? It, carbon wants to have an octet, so it wants to have eight. On the other hand, how many electrons does one hydrogen atom want to have? So hydrogen, believe it or not, only wants to have two electrons. Because remember, if you guys remember the periodic table, right, it looks something like this, and hydrogen is like right at the top. So hydrogen only needs like the first two electrons to be completely stable because it only has that initial small ring. It only has that first shell. But remember, if hydrogen wants to have two electrons and we have four hydrogens total, how many electrons total do we want to have? We want to have eight total for the hydrogens as well. So the total number of electrons that this, that this overall methane molecule wants to have is eight plus eight, which is 16, okay? So once you determine these two things in a molecule, all you have to do now, all you have to do now, if you look in the left-hand corner of your screen, this is the work I've done, right? This is totally the work I've done. If you look at the total uh, things we've determined, now that we've done them, you want to subtract one from two. You want to subtract, basically you want to subtract the number you have from one, remember rule number one, which is the total number of valence electrons present, uh, from two. You want to subtract one from two, and two was the number of electrons that we want, right? So we wanted 16 electrons, but we only got eight. And then we divide that by two, and when you divide that, that will give you the number of bonds needed in the molecule. So for methane, we did, we did eight 
uh, subtracted from 16 divided by 2, so 4. And what this will tell me is that for one molecule of methane, which is CH4, we need four bonds. So if it is four bonds, how are we going to draw them? Well, I'm going to draw them right here with the C in the middle, and then assuming we have four bonds, I'm just going to make sure that every hydrogen has one bond to the C. And that's basically our Lewis dot structure. What is the geometry of this structure? Well, this is something else that we need to know. The geometry, any time an atom has four bonds around it, is always going to be tetrahedral. And this is also something that, if you don't already know, you should memorize for the MCAT. Where like, if you have one substance bonded to four other things around it, the four bonds give it a tetrahedral geometry. This is a tetrahedral geometry. And assuming it is tetrahedral, the bond angles for a tetrahedral geometry molecule is going to be, are going to be actually, 109.5 degrees. Okay? That's, that's just something that happens whenever something has a tetrahedral geometry. So that's 109 degrees. The, uh, the angle between these two is 109 degrees 0.5. And the angle between these two is also 109.5. So the point is, knowing these geometries and the bond angles between them is something that takes time, but at least here you can see that if you have four angles, uh, four bonds, you can have a 109.5. Now, So now let's move on. Let's apply this strategy that I told you, the difference between has and wants, and let's do it to CO2. So carbon, how many electrons does carbon have? Carbon has four electrons. Similarly, how many electrons does oxygen have? Well, oxygen has six, right? But in this CO2 molecule, how many oxygens do we have? We have two. So we have 12 electrons for oxygen. So the total electrons that we have are 16, because we have 12 from oxygen, the two oxygens, and four from carbon. Now, how many electrons do we want? Carbon and oxygen both want eight, right? Because they're in I believe the same period on the periodic table. Assuming they both want 8, carbon will want 8, but remember, because we have two oxygens, whatever one oxygen wants, we have to basically double, so 16. So the total number of electrons that we want, we want 24, but we have 16. So now, again, remember, we subtract, we subtract 16 from 24. So we do 16, I'm basically doing this, 16 minus 20, or, or 24 minus 16 divided by 2. And what you'll get is the number of bonds we need, and this is actually 4. So you're supposed to have 4 bonds in this molecule. So how do you draw CO2 with 4 bonds? Well, it's exactly like this, right? one carbon in the middle with a double bond to one oxygen and a double bond to another oxygen. But yes, you do not want to forget that there are also going to be lone pairs because every, every oxygen will want to have an octet. But the point is, doing this strategy of subtracting um, the amount you have from the amount you want will give you the number of bonds you need, and once you have the number of bonds you need, you can add those bonds in and fill in every um, lone pair and get the proper bond angle or the proper Lewis structure. And then once you have the structure, Assuming you have this structure with just one and two groups sticking out of one central atom, this is a linear structure, right? And the bond angle is 180 degrees. Oh, God. And if you didn't know that, let me undo all of this. If you didn't know this was 180 degrees, that's okay. You can find out now. But the point is, if you have a linear structure, the bond angle is 180 degrees, right? So that's carbon dioxide. The bond angle is 180. But now let's move on to carbonate. Carbonate is CO3 2 minus, so this is going to make it a bit more difficult. So how are we going to draw this molecule? We have no idea. But remember, we always have the step number one. How many electrons does this have? right? And then step number two, how many does it want? So how many does carbon have? Carbon has four electrons. How many does oxygen have? Oxygen usually has six, but how many oxygens are present in the CO3 2 minus mo molecule? Well, we have three which is 18 total, okay? So you might be thinking, well, that's it. We have 18 oxygen electrons from oxygen and four from carbon. But that's not necessarily the case because CO3, remember the other thing on this molecule, is a two minus charge. If there's a two minus charge, there are two free electrons in this molecule that are not, that are not in oxygen or carbon. So remember, anytime you have a charge, you have to account for the fact that you have those electrons free to make bonds. And in this case, the two minus will tell us we have two electrons free that are going to be uh, solely from the charge. And assuming we have that, that means we have a total of 24 electrons, right? 
But now how many electrons do we want to have, right? I mean, obviously carbon has always wanted eight. Similarly, oxygen always wants eight. But how many oxygens do we have here? We have three oxygens, and therefore we need 24. Like we want 24 electrons. So the total number we want is 32. And again, follow the same procedure we've been doing. 20, 32 minus 24, divide that by two, and you end up getting four. You need four bonds between the carbon and the three oxygens. So how are you gonna draw them? How are you gonna draw them? Um, how are you gonna draw them? Well, here's one way to draw them, right? Here is one way to draw them. Now that you know you have four bonds, look, one bond here, two bond here, three bond here, and four bond here. And once you draw these things out, you can add in the lone pair. So you notice I'll have, I've added in the lone pairs around the oxygens, and you're done, right? So this is the beauty of this approach. Once you add in the bonds and you fill in the lone pairs and give everything the eight electrons it deserves, you're done. And you notice I already have my charges in, and you notice I have the two minus. This is a perfect Lewis dot structure. But notice that in this case, we have our carbon in the middle, right? Um, I'm gonna actually draw it here. So look at my lower left-hand corner of the screen. We have our carbon in the middle, and then it's bonded to one group here, right? It's bonded to another group here, and it's bonded to another group here. So now carbon is only bonded to three groups. When carbon is bonded to three groups, it's kind of like pretending like you're dividing a circle into three, because now we're looking for the bond angle between these two groups, and that's 120 degrees. And the way you can remember this is if you pretend to divide a circle up into thirds, right? Look at this circle I've drawn in the lower right-hand corner, and you divide it into thirds, then every third of the circle will have 120 degrees, because a circle has 360 degrees total. So the point is, we now know that CO3 2 minus is 120 degrees and bond angles. Okay, uh, the geometry of this is actually known as um, trigonal planar. So you guys are learning a lot this video. You're learning about geometries, you're learning how to do Lewis dot structures, and you're learning the bond angles, which is awesome. All right. Our last one, the last thing we're trying to do is water. Most of you will know how to draw water, but if you don't, you know, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. This strategy that I'm telling you is foolproof, it has always been foolproof for me. So how many electrons does hydrogen want? Hydrogen wants one electron, right? Or I mean, how many electrons does hydrogen have? have? Well, hydrogen has one electron, but again, in water, we have two hydrogens, so we have two electrons that, uh, that are present solely on behalf of uh, hydrogen. Similarly, how many does oxygen have? Oxygen has six electrons, right? Six. So the total number of electrons we have are eight, correct? But how many do we want? Well, remember, oxygen always wants eight. And then how many does hydrogen want? Hydrogen wants two, right? Because this is in the first period of the periodic table. But remember, we have two hydrogens present, so we do two times two. So we want four for hydrogen, four. And so we have 12. And now if we do what we do all the time, 12 minus 8 divided by 2, we get the number of bonds we need, which is 4. Oh no, 2. So assuming it's 2, which is pretty normal, we're going to now move on to the fact that water's structure actually is going to be oxygen making two bonds to hydrogen. Look, bond number 1, bond number 2, with its two lone pairs. So now you might be wondering, what is the bond angle? And what is the geometry? Well, first of all, the geometry of water is bent. And, you know, me figuring out the geometries of these things, I'm doing it because I've been doing it for so long. But if you don't know these, there are literally charts available online, like in the lower left-hand corner of this, that relate the structure to the, to the sh shape to the bond angle. And so what you'll see is, in these charts, you'll be asked the number of bo atoms bonded to the central atom and the number of lone pairs. So for water... For water, oxygen is bonded to two different things. It's bonded to two hydrogens, but then it also has one lone pair and two lone pairs, right? So we're going to go down to water, and you'll see that there are two atoms bonded to water, and there are two lone pairs. And it'll tell you that the bond angle for this, right, there's a, there's a column, is going to be about 105 degrees, right? So when you have two bonded groups and two lone pairs, you have a bent geometry, which gives you a bond angle of 104.5. Similarly, this also includes a lot of the other molecules. This includes CH4, and CH4 had only four things bonded to it with no lone pairs, and that has a bond angle of 109.5, right? So these charts will make studying easier if you haven't already seen them, but if you have seen them, 
good for you because this is this is something that we need to be proficient in going from Lewis structures to bond angles to molecular name etc so we have now done officially all the work if we if we look at all the work we've done so far methane has a bond angle of 109.5 water is 104.5 about 105 co2 is 180 and carbonate is 120 so if you now arrange them from highest to lowest the carbon dioxide is the greatest, followed by carbonate, followed by methane, and followed by water. And so the best answer here uh, is going to actually be D, right? Yeah, carbon dioxide is greater than carbonate, which is greater than methane, which is greater than water. So D is the answer. Hope you guys found this video helpful. It definitely takes a lot of time to master this, but I guarantee you it's not going away anytime soon. So with that, like, subscribe, share. Uh, see you guys in the next one.